911 GT3, a combination of letters and numbers that denotes one of the best driver's cars ever made across all its generations. A vehicle that takes an inherently unbalanced rear engine formula and somehow transforms it into a track weapon, but it's one that you can still drive on the street. The GT3 will never win the horsepower wars or the 0-60 to 60 acceleration times, but this is one of the best engineered sports cars you can buy. And for the 992 generation, Porsche is again offering the touring version of the GT3 as a no-cost option, and today we're going to finally review a 992 generation GT3. In terms of the powertrain, the GT3 again has a 4-liter naturally aspirated flat 6 and it's essentially identical to the one found in the GT3 Cup car, so yes, it has a race car engine. It's got independent throttle bodies for even sharper response and still revs to that glorious 9,000 RPM red line. This engine actually was first seen in the previous generation Speedster. It makes 502 horsepower, 346 pound-feet of torque. All of that power is sent to the rear wheels. You can get a PDK dual clutch transmission, but you can also, for no cost, get the six-speed manual transmission. And Porsche GT cars have some of the best manual transmissions out there, and I'm happy to say this Touring has the six-speed manual transmission. In terms of exterior styling, this is still unmistakably a 911 and, of course, a GT3. You have those similar design cues, the proportions, those elements that make it unmistakably a 911. Evolution from the 991 generation to the 992 generation. And as a GT3 Touring, there are a couple unique touches. Obviously, you do not have the big fixed wing out back. The regular 992 generation GT3 has this giant swan neck wing, which is now actually dwarfed by the one from the GT3 RS. This is the more subtle looking classic looking one with a little active wing out back and also for the touring up front the lower fascia is painted body color and this color on this one is a paint to sample Azero Thetis which is the Lamborghini Aventador Roadster launch color and it looks absolutely amazing it's this bluish gray silver finish really classy and I think it ties in really well with the GT3 overall because as a touring you have the silver window surround we have silver wheels on this one with the yellow carbon ceramic brake calipers, you get silver exhaust pipes too. You can option those as all blacked out, but I think it works really well on this one. It's like the classier version of the GT3 Touring. The 992 generation is getting a bit bigger than the 991, and the GT3 is no difference. The front track here is actually 1.9 inches wider than the regular 911 Carrera to accommodate half-inch wider wheels, more tire. It's got 20-inch up front, 21-inch out back. But even though the wheels are getting wider and bigger, they're actually lighter than the outgoing 991 generation wheels. Lightweight is still the goal. Even though it's a bit bigger, weight is essentially the same as the outgoing generation. With that, let's hop in this GT3 Touring, take it for a drive. We'll talk about some of the interior parts, what is it like to drive, how does it compare to the 991 generation, and we'll discuss the value of the 992 generation GT3. And now we are in the GT3 on the road. I have been so excited for this moment, finally getting to drive the latest generation 992 GT3. The 991.2 GT3 manual is one of my favorite cars. I love all the GT3, GT3 RS, and having spent time with the 992 Carrera 4S, the Turbo S, I've been very much anxiously awaiting the opportunity to try out a GT3 because they just do it so well. It's just such a good car. Within 15 minutes of hopping in this car and driving it, I'm already comfortable. Somehow Porsche just the ergonomics, the powertrain, the clutch, the shifter, everything is just so good. I mean, steering feel, it's just so direct. Like every input yields, even the most tiniest little inputs up front, you can feel the front end just go. 
I just got out of my Z06, which is also a big track capable car, phenomenal machine, but it feels numb and heavy and lumbering compared to a GT3. It's not exactly a fair comparison. I think the Z06 took the American recipe of just like smash it um, with just insane amounts of grip and suspension and all that type of stuff, whereas the Porsche wants to dance. This is not a straight line car. We've covered that, right? The, the power numbers, the acceleration, that's not the point of a GT3. It's about handling. It's about dynamics. It's about track performance. And therefore, suspension is a big part of it. For this generation of the GT3, we have the front double wishbone suspension setup that is shared with the 911 RSR and a GT3 Cup. No suspension components are shared between a GT3 and a regular Carrera. This really is an attempt to take a race car, GT3 suspension, and put it into a road car. And this was the top tier until the GT3 RS came out, which literally seems to be a cup car that just put a license plate on it and goes, here you go, this is now a street car. But this GT3 is just such a nice experience. I, I remember why I love 911 GT3 so much. Man, why don't I own one of these already? The engine, that flat six that revs to 9,000 RPM is just phenomenal. In normal mode, you rev match yourself, so there's me. Nice. But now if I go into sport and I can toggle it on the steering wheel with the drive mode button, we have automatic rev match downshifts. There's second gear. And that sound just keeps building and building. Oh. It's so amazing. I do like the rev match downshifts because in fifth gear right now, fourth, third, second. <laughs> all the responses, all the inputs and resulting outputs are just so good. So this one is the GT3 Touring, which as the name suggests, is supposed to be the more well-rounded touring daily driver, I guess, GT3, but Mechanically, suspension-wise, everything, this is the same as the GT3 with the big wing. It just doesn't have the big wing, so the limits are gonna be a bit lower. <laughs> so it's gonna be just as stiff, just as hardcore, just without the big wing, which I don't know if I get. If I'm buying a GT3, I want the full GT3 experience. I want the big wing out back. There is an appeal to this to be a little more, I guess, under the radar, but how subtle can you be with an engine that sounds like this? <laughs> but the important part is you have the same mechanical options, standard equipment, everything. You can get carbon ceramic brakes, you can have the front lift, you can have all the different things. Touring really just is the the wing delete, you get the little active wing out back, so lower the threshold of performance, right? Not as much downforce and some aesthetic things, the changes on the dashboard and things like that. In terms of the interior, this GT3 is like a 992. I mean, there aren't a ton of changes. We do have the uh, carbon race buckets here, which you can tell the owner likes to track his car because we have a harness bar, aftermarket BBI harness bar, and then the uh, five point harnesses. I'm just running the regular seat belts here on the street. We have the same digital cluster here, some of the digital screens flanking that tachometer that goes to that glorious 9,000 RPM. The shifter, we have an actual proper manual shifter, uh, which is definitely nice. And I think the important thing to notice, if you do order PDK, you get the shifter that looks like this, not that little tiny little nub that they put in the regular 992s. So a lot of, a lot more technology screens versus the outgoing gen, just as to expect with the uh, 992 generation versus the outgoing 991. But I mean, it's still such a nice interior. You have a bit more leather on all these surfaces compared to, I think the regular GT3, which may go more in the suede. Um, but I mean, fit and finish materials, ergonomics are just so good. Downshift downshift it is such a glorious experience what an amazing machine track performance is absolutely the goal of the GT3 platform the one on the big wing 
that was as fast as a 918 Spider around the Nurburgring. I think it actually was a little bit faster, but on different tires, and I think they repaved the track. So that number can be taken with a grain of salt, but that's the point of a GT3, to be a track-focused car. The suspension things that are shared with actual cup cars really indicate that. The GT3 Touring will take away a little bit from that, because again, you don't have as much downforce, so that's not as much all-out screaming track car. But on the road, this thing is still just so phenomenal on some curvy roads. Oh my gosh, why don't I own one of these? It is my favorite manual car, the 911 GT3, whether it's a 991.2, 991, 992.991.1, remember they did not offer, you only could get a PDK and the 3.8, now with this four liter independent throttle body, is 9,000 RPM red line, yeah, it only makes 502 horsepower, but I, at no point, have I complained about that while running it out to Redline. We take a slight intermission from the 992 GT3 Touring Review because the owner also brought his 991.2 GT3 manual to compare, and that's a really cool opportunity, so I've hopped in the previous generation GT3, also a manual, 4 liter flat 6, but this one has been fairly track prepped. It's on pretty much race slicks, it's got a full uh, suspension setup, we've got racing brakes, got a bigger wing out back, got canards up front, and immediately I'm noticing two main differences, well actually three main differences. This does feel a bit smaller than the 992, and the steering feel, the reactions, are a bit slower. It really showed how much more nimble the 992 generation is with that revised front suspension, just with the inputs up front, right? So just a little bit like this and this. On the 992, it definitely feels much more responsive, which is saying something because even the 991 gen, I thought this was like the pinnacle when I drove this, and I was like, yeah, of course, this is one of the best handling cars. Sharper in the 992. And then the other thing is, this has like a big intake plenum, whereas the 992 generation has the independent throttle bodies for even better throttle response. And you can feel it. It definitely is a bit sharper on the 992 generation. It has a difference in characteristic and sound too, just the overall feeling of having independent throttle bodies. You can, I can hear the, <laughs> the harnesses <laughs> squilling on the, uh, the harness bar back there. This is such a cool opportunity to experience back to back. Literally I hopped out of the 992 GT3 Touring and into a 991 GT3. Again, they've been prepped a little bit differently. We're talking about big wing here versus a Touring model, but generation to generation, we get to see the similarities and differences. It does feel smaller, a little more compact. Turn in, still phenomenal, but this is weird. This almost feels like a little bit of a letdown from the uh, 992 Gen car, because I'm on the same drive route. Yeah, interesting. Oh, it's still so glorious though. That flat six. They still feel related. I mean, it's just an iteration improving upon perfection from the Porsche GT team. Ready? I love the Porsche GT3. And with that, let's go back to the Touareg video. When we talk about value, these are very expensive. The good news is GT3 Touring and GT3 Regular are the same. It is a no cost option to go to a Touring package versus the regular big wing GT3. And also good news, they actually I think called the PDK a standard and the manual as a no cost option. Porsche did actually listen to their customers and opted to put the manual transmission back into the GT3. So they've kept that up with this generation too. Oh. Yeah, and that's how I would option it. 160,000 base price, just over 160K. There's no such thing as a base 911 GT3. You start throwing in options, carbon ceramic brakes, the carbon race buckets. Don't even mention like paint a sample like this car. They get up there. 
well into the $200,000 range. I believe this one stickered for uh, just over $200,000, $212,000. It is very well optioned, right? Paint to sample adds usually a substantial amount. And then we get to the market value. The GT3s have become so desirable that with the 992 generation, markup I saw was between fifty dollars to $100,000. Now that we have 992 GT3 RS and GT4 RS, this may not be the headline one, but they're still worth a lot. And somehow, even before this recent era of crazy market demand and adjusted dealer markups and everything like that, um, somehow like GT3s have been immune to depreciation. Honestly, 911s overall seem to just like not want to depreciate like normal high-end cars or sports cars. So they hold value quite well. Uh, is this a quarter million dollar driving experience? Gotta say it, it delivers it if you're looking for the emotional analog engagement. It certainly can't match the McLaren 720S's, the Ferrari 488s of the world in terms of like the exotic appeal maybe or the brutal acceleration from those turbo power plants and I mean even within the Porsche family you go to a, a Turbo S that thing is blisteringly quick like go to jail fast launch control in all sorts of weather this is a driver's car that's the Porsche GT platform and almost everybody I know who has gone to a Porsche GT car has never looked back they just keep buying more of them and or new ones and just keep adding and adding and adding so I think it says something about what these cars are like, what the buyers want, what they desire. So good value, I think so. <laughs> well, there we go. My review of the 992 generation 911 GT3 Touring. What a machine. I knew it was gonna be good and at 1 million percent met every single expectation I wanted out of the latest generation GT3. Does it feel a little bit bigger? Yes. Does it feel the exact same essence just turned up? Absolutely. What a glorious machine. Now, I need to find my way into a GT3 RS because I want to see what that car is like. I'm assuming it's going to be absolutely insane. I hope you guys enjoyed this quick review of the 911 GT3. I'm happy I finally got to experience this one and a touring with the correct transmission choice. <laughs> Thanks for watching.